put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. The Hobbit, The Battle of Five Armies, 3D high frame rate review. So Smaug is attacking Lake Town, Thorin is seeking the Arkenstone, and legions of orcs are on the way. I'm not going to give too much away about what happens, like, a lot happens in this movie, and, and a, you know, some really big things happen early on, so I'm going to try not to spoil any of it, but let's just say, yeah, there's a lot that needs dealing with, and since you already know that Smaug is going to attack Lake Town, let me just say, there are, there's going to be an aftermath there, it's, it's, you know, these it's people's homes, so yeah, there's, there's, and let's just say Bard will be important. I think, I think we're gonna leave it at that. And yes, so the, the titular battle, when you leave this movie, it's, it's like, that was a really long battle. And, and it does kind of, the climax is a really long, big battle. And, and to be fair, you know, Peter Jackson had been, there wasn't a lot of room for a big army versus army battle in the first two Hobbit movies. And there, you know, in Lord of the Rings, yeah, he, he gives us a lot of that. He thrives do, doing it. So you can imagine that he he really needed a release here. He, he yeah. So and it's awesome. I I can't really. It's yeah. It's 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 awesome. Now the this does well on the you know the themes of friends you know, friendship, strong male friendship, strong male bonds. And this really uses, you know, it does character stuff here that it could really only do on account of having built up with, you know, yeah, several movies worth of, of character development. And especially the relationship between Bilbo and Thorin is at its most poignant, dramatic, and compelling here. And it's, of course, you know, will Thorin, you know, get past his greed and pride? Will it actually matter that there are? 13 dwarves with separate names and barely any characterization, you know, and yeah, the the love triangle it's resolved. Let's let's that's that's the positive. To to be fair, some good drama does come of it in this one. Still didn't really need to see it, but yeah. Now this fits in a lot of creatures. I mean I already mentioned the battle. Yeah, an aspect where it really Peter Jackson had a lot of really cool ideas for creatures to be in a battle. And they're all here. So, yeah. And... Some of the comedy is not good. The, the, 
in in desolation we see the the master of Lake Town, I think is his name, and he has this sniveling, you know, yeah. He's he's the the second commander, whatever there, and his name is Alfred. He's in this. He's meant to be funny. He sometimes is. There's there's a lot where they try really hard to make us laugh at. I think if if like cut maybe at least a third of that material and just let there be enough like there's there's a there's a sideshow bob episode and i i think every every great philosophical meaning in in life can be derived from a sideshow bob episode where crusty points out that the pie in the face gag is only funny if the sap has got digni d dignity. Alfred does not have dignity. He never had it. He he wouldn't know it if if it you know painted itself purple and danced on a harpsichord, harpsichord and told and singing "I am your dignity." Maybe cut some of that, but but yeah. Now. There's a lot of fan service here. There are characters that get fight scenes that didn't really need fight scenes, but it's so much fun. Elrond kicks ass. Saruman Galadriel. Yeah, it's and and it's like you know you're sitting there you're walking. This probably didn't need to be in the movie, but I am so happy that it is. The I suppose that. Well, one thing to note about the the conflict here is Smaug, you know, the dragon, the Lonely Mountain itself, Erebor, was where Thorin's, I think, grandfather had his kingdom. So getting the mountain back by itself, that is obviously a big deal to the dwarves. And you might wonder why, you know, what are the, what stakes do the other sides have in it? This one, there's, there's a little bit, excuse me, in desolation about what Thranduil, excuse me, wants out of, you know, what, what is his deal with this. There's, there's a little more of that here. And other than that, like I say, Lake Town, <sighs> Yeah, the, the, the desolation of Smaug did not necessarily end in the desolation of Smaug. And, yeah, the, and, and meanwhile, while these other sides might want something, you know, having to do in some way or another with the gold or the mountain or the area around the mountain, yeah, Thorin... <laughs> Thor's not too happy about it. It, it, you know, it was hard fought to get there, and he's not really happy with he. He hasn't learned how to share yet. Now, as with the first two, this is darker, similar to Lord of the Rings, where the book is lighter, and personally, I prefer the films. Now, I did read the last third or so of the book. I'll deal with that later. Before watching this and briefly they they a lot of the book is is here in the movie and then some stuff that wasn't in the book. I haven't read like the the full Cimmerillion. I haven't read the, the appendices so I don't know if everything in the movie is also in the books in one way or another, but what's in the book, you know, some some is also here. A lot of what's in the book is also here. And yeah, they, they make it work. There were some things that I'm quite sure how they were gonna Yeah. Now this has Dane, played by, who's like the cousin of Thorin, 
played by Billy Connolly, he's a lot of fun. He's he's really 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 cool and a lot of fun. He's he gets into battle and he's just headbutting one after the other and just having a good time on on the battlefield. Now this in in a way this doesn't have as much to wrap up on as Return of the King, but I will say this this does flow much better than the endings in the, the, the many endings of Return of the King. In this one it's yeah, it it really just very smooth. You know, there there are a number of goodbyes, some very teary and heartfelt, and it's really well done. And and it just, yeah, it just it it flows very nicely. Now, like the first two, you know the the three D and high frame rate takes about 15 minutes for your eyes to adjust to it and then it looks amazing and immersive and they use the fact that it's 3D but they don't abuse the fact that it's 3D you know so you have like there there's a bit near the end where like someone grabs a sword and the length of the sword is just sticking right in your face and it's awesome you know and there yeah there there are a couple of things like that but it's not like every other shot or anything it's just enough that it feels really yeah it 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 draws you in it doesn't draw attention to itself too much so yeah now i on the issue of length some people are going to find this to be too long and uh, like I said when when you come out it's just that was a really long battle scene and it's it's an awesome battle scene but it's yeah it 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 didn't need to be quite that long and I think one thing that this really this this trilogy really wants to set up the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Like, like really, like, carry it right to the door and just, like, you know, at no point is it, is it, like, Star Wars prequely. But there are issues with trying to connect the two, and that is most visible here, I would say, in this particular film. Yeah, the I'm not sure I should really give any details on that, but just yeah, by by the end of this, you will still feel like I mentioned that the the Lord of the Rings trilogy has you know vast battles. In those, the the stakes there are very clear, and here it is a little more muddled. What exactly? It's just, yeah, and it, in this, they, they make, they try to make it sound like the, technically, yes, the, the entire Middle Earth is at stake in this, and this is not a spoiler, it's, excuse me, it's, it's said pretty or excuse me, pretty early on, and by, a, by someone you trust. So, and it just, it doesn't necessarily feel like it should be, you know, where, where Lord of the Rings, it's very clear. I mean, Ring of Power, Eye of Sauron, we, yeah, this, this needs to be dealt with. And in this, it just isn't quite that, yeah, it, it, it tries to be. And it certainly is fun to watch, but it's just not quite... You're you're not really feeling like well this is the, <laughs> the Hobbit basically is the Hobbit Bilbo Baggins and these thirteen dwarves you know out to deal with Smaug and yeah it's just it it does feel a little awkward to try to fit in that 
you know, this is really all about all of Middle Earth. Now, the I suppose that more or less that now. Before watching this, I, I was wondering what this was going to do with Sauron, the Necromancer, and again, it's it's one of these things where it really wants to fit, you know, line itself up very neatly next to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and it just doesn't quite work. It it feels you know, I mean, it's it's been built up over these that that there was something going on with this, you know, sort of thing, and with this being the the you know, yeah, with with this being the the resolution other than the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I don't think that it was really, you know, it was it was built up, and it doesn't quite follow up on that and yeah not gonna give any spoilers away but yeah I, th I think I will leave it at that now the the action is amazing and highly immersive you know magic melee archery different armies with different strengths and just yeah now That. Now, this still very much is about the unlikely hero, and I will say where <clears throat> Bilbo has not always had an awful lot to do in this trilogy. In this one, they do really give him something very compelling to do, and yeah, it, it really... It works, you know. It's it's what what Bilbo would do in this situation, and he does it, and it just yeah, it's it's yeah. That this this does really well with yeah the character of him and Thorin, the the way those interact with each other. Now, in case anyone was wondering if I was still you know annoyed that that. We had to wait, you know, annoyed by where the second one left off. Yeah, yeah. I'd, this one doesn't quite make up for that, although it does do some interesting things that it couldn't otherwise. Now, I suppose... I think that might more or less cover it but yeah it's it's got some really great drama and it resolves these various things fairly nicely and it's an awful lot of fun it's yeah i th i think it's like 2 hours and 15 minutes not counting the end credits you can feel that a lot of that time is de devoted to one big battle, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, but ultimately you can tell that a lot of energy was spent on making trying to make this more than this quest to you know deal with Smaug and reclaim Erebor. Yeah, just ultimately, you know, compared to the Lord of the Rings, it does fall a little flat. And that's, you know, again, Lord of the Rings, very clear, what do we have to do? And then, you know, yeah. And in this, it just, yeah. I suppose, I think that about covers it. I've read other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. 
please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.